My friend Danny Fenster is an American journalist who's been detained by the military in Myanmar while boarding a flight back to the United States to visit his family. We're calling for Danny's immediate release. Please follow the hashtag BringDannyHome to find out more, and please consider signing the petition at MoveOn.org. We're hoping for Danny's safe return and sending love to the entire Fenster family, Buddy, Rose, and Brian. Today on Galaxy Tenants, we continue our conversation with Roosevelt Collier, and we welcome special guest Andy Thorne of Leftover Salmon. As well, we feature their songs Altitude Sickness, Skunk Mountain, and Fiddlin' Around. My favorite band of all time, no band compares, my absolute top of the list is the Allman Brothers Band. And you had the opportunity to play with the Allman Brothers, probably at Wani. Multiple times, yeah. yeah. How does that work out? And tell me what that's like when you're standing on stage with one of the most well-known, legendary rock bands of all time. So that's different from the feeling of playing Red Rocks. This is now, we are talking about playing with the Allman Brothers band. So I was fortunate to play their last show with them on their last song, on the encore, at Wani. So that was history with me, and I was honored that they had me up. Man, that's a huge deal, you know? That was a very huge deal. But one, just to just to be able to walk on stage with the freaking Almond Brothers, you know, and knowing that, hey, Greg is right there, you know, like you have trucks is right there, J Mo and them is right here, you know, and I'm standing in between Warren and Derek, which is nerve wracking. <laughs> hey, listen, once you get over that butterfly, which I don't ever get butterflies playing. I, I don't do that. But you walk on the stage with a band like that with the Almon Brothers. We are not talking about no, you know, we're talking about the damn Almond Brothers. Listen, man, that feeling in itself is a feeling that you would never get back, you know? And I'm thankful, one, for it. I would never trade that feeling for nothing, you know? And it definitely it definitely made me play better. I cannot lie about that. As much as I would love to say that I played with the Allman Brothers, I would never want to have to stand between Derek Trucks and Warren Haynes and have to, like, keep up with that. It's too much pressure for me, and I commend you for being able to do that without man crying. Oh, thank you. No, 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 no. You know, not man crying off stage. you know? You have to do it off stage. you know? Like, you can't let folks see you doing it, you know? There's a process to it, you know? Like, you go and rip it, you come off stage, you go, like, in the car, and then and, and then you man cry, you know? <laughs> but, but yeah, man, that is one of my top three bands to, of all time. Really? Know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Man. I posted on Facebook asking people what their top three albums of all time are. And that's a hard thing to answer because when someone says top 10, you can just start throwing albums out. When someone says top five, you can just kind of throw a couple few up. When someone says top three, you really have to be calculated in how you put that out. And for me, with very little thought, Almond Brothers Eat a Peach was on that list for me. Wow. I want to talk about some of the other maybe crazy experiences that you could tell me about that you've been involved with or have had. When you reflect on your years of touring and playing shows and jam cruises and music festivals and the nonsense that you and I have gotten into (laughs) and uh, and everything else I wonder what are some of the craziest things that you've experienced where you said I can't believe you know this is happening right now or or not dissimilar to playing with the Allman Brothers say wow a crazy like experience this is another band which I had the pleasure and honor of jumping on the bill with that Justin made this happen. And for my mind, I can't even think that this still happened was when I got the call and asked if I wanted to play with Fareed up in um, New Orleans and to play with him, Stanton Moore, Victor Wooten, and... um. 
Tony Monaco. Oh yeah, Tony Monaco is great. Tony man. Monaco on a freaking oh, oh my god. Yeah, and he's such a sweetheart too, dude. He's so great. <laughs> Tony Monaco. <laughs> listen, I have never met him, but I've already known him, you know. And these are some giants, some like real giants. And when he this was during the sound check, Tony said, "Hey, hey, Rosie, I can't play the pedal still, but." I've been practicing on trying to make the organ sound like a pedal steel. He literally made the organ sound like a pedal steel. I got, I said, I said, hey, why am I on this gig right now? I said, I said, I don't belong here. I said, there's no way that he just did this. I was like, hey, I don't know. You know, I'm gonna call Justin because this was a mistake. You know, I was like, I'm very humbled, but I know my limits. What's funny about that is just that it, the pedal steel is always meant to mock the organ. And so here's the organ mocking the pedal steel. He is mocking it and it sounds like... And leave it to Tony Monaco to oh, nail it. Tony Monaco, my goodness. And yeah. I say he nailed it. He nailed it. But that night was like, for me, like alone, was like legendary, you know? You Where know? was that? Was that at Tipitina's? No, or? that was at uh, Maple Leaf Bar. Maple Leaf Bar. Yeah, That's you, right. know, you, you know, like That's a small right. bar. Very small. But you know what, man? It's It's legendary. And it was insanely packed. But, like, you have, like, I think Jeff Coffin came in, too. Mm-hmm. From Dave Matthews' band, yep. Bela Fleck and the Fleck Tones. Oh, yeah, man. And so, listen, man, if you can imagine all of this firepower on stage, dude, and I'm the least one. So, I'm geeking out while playing, you know. I'm, like, geeking out while watching Faree go crazy with Victor and Jeff. But then, like, you have Tony. And then I'm standing more. Listen, I'm having an all-out fanboy attack while playing. And I have to take a solo after freaking Victor Wood. I'm up like, I'm up like, listen, y'all let me go first. All right? Let 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 the young boy go first, you know? Speaking of young boy yeah. and being nervous around Victor Wooten, I just want to quickly mention when we played Cervantes, and I think it was you... Neil uh, from oh, Dopapod yeah. and Joel from Genetics oh, opening for Victor Wooten Band. I love them guys, man. Yes. And we surprised Joel and brought Victor Wooten on stage to play two bass. It was Joel was still on bass. It's not like he took Joel's bass and he no. left the stage. It was the two they of them was playing bass guess. together. And if you could have seen the smile on Joel's face, <laughs> that he literally couldn't get that smile off his own face. <laughs> you know, that smile, you know what? I think it's still there, you know, but that was a treat. I want to tell just a, another funny story. I love Joel. This is a little bit at his expense, yeah. but I love Joel. At Element one year, Element Music Festival in British Columbia, Canada, Genetics brought O'Teal Burbridge on stage and did the same thing where Joel remained on stage. And I remember O'Teal pointing at Joel to take a bass solo and Joel shaking his head no. <laughs> and so he didn't take the solo. He declined. <laughs> and then so O'Teal just crushed it. But it was uh, Joel's great, man. What a great bass player and a yes. young kid. And if you haven't, if you guys aren't familiar with Joel Searles, check him out. Absolutely, man. <laughs> so funny. Did he decline, you say? It's on video. I'm going to show it to you when we're done right here. He, I he, can see him saying no. That's O'Teal why. points at him and Joel goes. I can see him. It's unbelievable. I can see him smiling and saying, nope, I'm, nope. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. All right, so after a year of sitting still, a year plus during this pandemic, I want to talk a little bit about what the return to live music is going to look like. Mm. I guess everybody's perspective is different, especially during the pandemic. You're coming from Florida where... Um, I'm not going to attack yeah. your governor. It's too easy. Yeah, uh, easy. Here, here's what I'll say. Uh <laughs> You were fortunate, and some of the folks were fortunate in your state to still do some gigs yeah, during yeah. this thing. Mm-hmm. So it's going to look different than folks who haven't played in over a year. But yeah, yeah. and it's going to look different in different states. But let's let's talk a little bit about what our predictions are for yeah. the future of live music here in the in the coming months and and year. Even what do you Absolutely. think this is going to look like? Well, one, I definitely see like everything is definitely being adapted with the whole live stream era. Which is actually giving, you know, spots a bigger audience, you know, both ways, you know, I think let's say like 50 percent of the venues will keep things like as, you know, man, as they are type deal as far as, you know, buying a table versus like, you know, just a full fledged everybody's just like, you know, like on top of each other. 
I think that that's a thing that will stick. That's just my like opinion. I, I think so. I think that the festivals for like a certain time period, they will stay like it is maybe type deal. That may be a lesson as far as the um, social distancing as far as like, you know, six feet from three feet. But I think that they may still have some of them that actually keeps the pods and uh, things of that nature just because, you know, man, it's just another way of festivals and shows nowadays. And we must be safe, you know, and I just feel like things may not be full fledged just yet like even though they say that it's all right to be wide open right now i think for the next two two to three years you know we can still see like you know pods yeah i i think i I agree with you in some sense i think that the information we just got from the cdc shows that the vaccines are even more effective than we thought they could have been Mm -hmm. so what's good about that is it feels like we can safely gather even in large groups as Mm -hmm. long as folks are vaccinated. And now that everybody has access to vaccines or likely has access to vaccines, you may be able to see full capacity shows even at the end of this summer. Um, I like the distancing idea because people are gross in general, Uh, (laughs) but, but I don't, Based on these, the most recent information, I think as you see breakouts in certain areas, they might implement some distancing. They may uh, do some reduced capacities. But right. if this plays out how it looks like it may, I don't want to get ahead of anything here, but we could be going just back to full capacity. And, you know, in that situation, man, I probably would still wear a mask if I'm going to be no, around I, thousands I, of people indoors. I mean, I'm. you know what? Like, you are absolutely right. That's facts, but you know what, man? If we are going to be back at full, it's definitely up to each person now to do their own part. And so, I would definitely be wearing a, a like you know, like a face mask or just doing my own social distancing. You know what, man? I'm gonna definitely have that type of stuff in my rider. You know, um, still, you know, because that's with the artists as far as being on stage and backstage area now you know what man the front house and stuff like that that's on the vin- venue you know it's a so, great excuse to tell people that they can't come back to the green room. It, it is a great it, it wow thank you so much that is the number one that, yep yep so it is a great excuse keep that moving forward to keep that moving forward everybody you have to be yeah <laughs> Don't show me your card. <laughs> there you go. The only, my only concern is just with the variants. We'll see how what some of these variants look like. But if yeah. something goes around the vaccine, it could push us backwards into more of these kind of steps. And hopefully people will be better practiced than they were in the past year because um, yeah. it was kind of a shit show. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. So, I mean, listen, man, we all hope for the absolute best, mm-hmm. you know, but, you know, don't get too comfortable you know right that's i think that's good advice don't get too comfortable because we don't we don't know what's coming it it feels good it looks good but yeah anything can happen i think we have to kind of roll with the punches yes absolutely
I want to welcome to the Galaxy Tenants podcast one of my, well, no, I'm not going to say one of, I'm just going to flat out say it, my favorite banjo player of all time, oh, Andy yeah. Thorne. Got oh right. my gosh. <laughs> Dude, how are you? Good to see you guys, Justin and Roosevelt. Dude, what, man, dude, what is time. going on, man? A whole year and a just half. Having a little Sunday with the new baby, you know? Oh, congratulations. Dude, did you hear I'm a dad now? Dude, congrats. Thank you, dude. Boy or girl? Boy. Oh, brother. Barry. Barry. Uh, that's so great. I was just working on uh, my new dad podcast project with Ross James. Yeah, dude, I heard about that. So tell me, is it is it your podcast? I've... He and I host it. Okay. And, and what's the premise, being dads? We talk about all our joys and struggles and the weeks of being dads that we just had. So... We have a lot of struggles so far. <laughs> You're a dad too, right, Roosevelt? Man, listen, I'm I'm a dad going on 16 years. Holy um, shit. So, so yes, you know, I, mean, I can talk about a lot of struggles. So you should call me sometimes, brother. We need to interview. I have you. a lot. Listen, I, I have a lot of struggles, and I have a lot oh of good times. God. But yeah, you know, congratulations, man. It, it, it's going to be a nice road for you, man. We're having a blast. Yeah. So, Rosie thought you had a pet fox. Dude, That's right. I mean, you don't have a pet fox. It's, it's nature's, fox. yeah, wait, it's nature's wait, fox. Wait, but hold on, tell me, do you or you don't? His life is like a Disney movie. When you live in the mountains of Colorado, the foxes just kind of gather. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of foxes in this neighborhood, and we're lucky we don't have dogs, so the foxes just gather in our yard. Where? Where? So at? where? We're drawn to banjo music. <laughs> what? Um, where? What we city? live up in the North Boulder foothills at about okay. seventy-three hundred feet. Oh, you up there? Yeah, We're that's about 2,000 feet above Boulder, man. You got to come play the deck. Nope, I can't because I won't be able to breathe. So it's lower than it's lower <laughs> than the house that you used to. We used to play. It was lower than Matt and Terry's by about fifteen hundred feet. So you should survive. Okay, then I should survive. Well, then yes, we'll I'm coming. We'll get you an oxygen tank. <laughs> yeah, two of them. <laughs> then yes, let's do it, bro. That would be so sick. <laughs> I was talking to Roosevelt about bringing him to Colorado for the first time. And when we put together the band with Dave Watts and Garrett Sayers and Joey Porter, how all of it made a whole bunch of sense. And then we brought in the wild card that is you. Right. Um, so and, cool. Right. And I just saw those memories pop up on Facebook. What was it, 2014? Seven years ago, yeah. Wow. But I just wanted to say that what you added to that project, it, it made it... It took it to like a different dimension. I didn't know what to expect. And to hear the banjo right. over the what, what I would normally expect from funk music, it was just such a cool combo. And that was a fun run. It definitely that was like added in a whole different spice to it because I had no clue what was about to happen until the sound check. And then I was like, OK, I didn't shed enough for this right here. <laughs> no, I'm going to totally get my ass already. kicked. And and it's going to be good, but I totally was not prepared for this. That's about to happen. And do I mean it was the best music, man? I've played in a while, man. And that was with you, bro. Thank you, like for, for like, was, seriously, man. Still, when I think about it, that was like one of the coolest groups of gigs I've ever done, especially as a banjo player, because I never get asked to play on a funk gig. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even if there's like a little bit of funk grass thrown in, yeah. Or, that was definitely the first time I'd played a whole gig. Wow. Or like funk and rock styles. All really? Night. I'm pretty sure. I mean, in Leftover Dude. Salmon, we play a lot of electric music, but it's not yeah. it's like more that. grassy. So that was oh. so cool to try it and to realize it worked. Oh, dude, it was crazy. Stuff. What We did stuff together with the Lee Boys, right? Right, right, right. Prior, You know, I forgot about that. Yeah. So I think... Like, we kind of realized, oh, we do the same triplet licks, you know? Right, 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 you know? With our threes, right. Correct, correct. Man, wow, my goodness. Because you finger have... pick just like I do with your yeah. right hand. Yeah, yeah. So that's why things made so much sense. But I wasn't prepared for, I didn't shed enough for you, <laughs> you know? Like, you know? <laughs> Like, you know, I did not practice long enough. So, man, I, I definitely need to do, man. And then, like, you was playing through an amp. You was playing right. through through your amp, which took it up like a whole other notch. Dude, it was so phenomenal. Yeah. You know, that was crazy, man. Andy, can you tell us and our listeners just a little bit about playing 
a traditional instrument in such a non-traditional way? It's really fun to try to do, first of all. I'm lucky I this guy, Ian Davidson, who's out in Arcata, California, when I was first joining Leftover, he had just started making that hybrid electric banjo that I play. It's kind of like an acoustic electric, um, but it can get as loud as an electric. So he gave me one of those when I was joining Salmon which was what really started like playing the different kind of styles for me because I'd never had an electric banjo before. And that thing opened a lot of doors to being loud enough to play those other styles. And I guess it's just like listening to the band around you and trying to do stuff that sounds cool. <laughs> it's really that simple. It's not very simple, but right. if it can be, then you're doing good. I was a jazz guitar major in college, so... Okay. Makes a lot of sense. Now the cat's out the bag. Yeah. <laughs> that so does make sense. Some knowledge there. I never got good at it. But, um, <laughs> see. <laughs> so right. Place with, like that. I mean, instantly when Roosevelt and I started playing with the Motet rhythm section, it was like, holy shit, this is awesome. And when we started trading back and forth, a lot of the riffs that I normally do over bluegrass worked over the yep. funk stuff and we had a lot of the same patterns and they just yep. locked up like instantly in harmony yep. yeah yeah we did it did that's yep. really interesting absolutely that's what i said i was like you know and it made so much sense you know it's just personally i wasn't ready for it i mean it, it was you know and i wish i could have had more hours like in this, you know like i said, don't think you can ever anticipate you can never Andy anticipate. Thorne. you, like, you don't know I learned quick. Right, right. I learned quickly, but like on the spot kind of thing. But it worked so well, you know, with us doing things, you know. Even just when it was you and me as a duo, like we did those videos for the uh, what was that? Series Second called? Story Garage. Yeah, with Alan Crandall. Yep. And yeah, we were just talking about that and how much sound the two instruments made, and that just it was a barrage of notes. Yeah, I was like, wow, a slide guitar and an electric banjo sound good together.
Yeah, so that was insane. Just like I told Justin, is because we made up everything right there, like on the spot. We really came up with like those tunes, like kind of right there. You know what? We we probably had some type of ideas, but you know, like everything else was right then and there. That's why we was laughing so hard because it was like I can't believe that this this just worked. And I remember we made up a song. Basically, you made it up and showed it to me, but you called it Altitude Sickness. <laughs> <laughs> altitude sickness. That's the other thing you were it. having a little That's, bit of that. <laughs> altitude sickness and skunk mountain, and we did another one. I forgot the third I one. I live on skunk mountain, so. Oh, <laughs> oh that's where it came from. Okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I mean, not really. It's a, just a weed joke, but. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, it'll be skunk mountain soon. <laughs> something. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow. Recently, I had the pleasure of seeing you at Planet Bluegrass with Leftover okay. Sand. Yeah, that was an absolute delight. And uh, and then you guys did, what, a couple nights at Red Rocks to follow that? That's right. Was that Salmon's kind of comeback in Colorado coming off the pandemic? And tell us a little bit about that run. It was. It was basically our album release weekend. We just put out a new album, which we're really excited about. It's called The Brand New Good Old Days, and it's on a real label for the first time in a while, Compass Records. Wow. So it's been going really well with them running the show. And it was just special to be back playing in Colorado at two of our favorite places. Like the band has a long history at Planet Bluegrass. And so do I, which is the venue in Lions. I, uh, I won the banjo that I still play there when I was 19. So it was very cool in the, in the uh, Rocky Grass Banjo Contest. So it was cool for everybody to be back there. And another fun thing we did, so Eric Deutsch played piano with us for five years, and he's all over our new record. And then shortly after that, he got asked to join the Chicks, formerly the Dixie Chicks. So he had this big opportunity to go on road, and he left the band right before the pandemic hit. Anyway, their whole tour got canceled, so he's kind of been left without a gig for a little bit. But we actually surprised the whole crowd at Red Rocks and brought him in for those two shows. And it was so cool. We've never done that before, really. You usually want to like announce something that you're spending money on to like get a little something out of it in advance. But I guess those shows were already sold out. So we hid the keyboard rig in the back and it's a big keyboard rig. And then we slid it in and Eric came on stage and it just felt like old times having him back too. That's awesome, man. The band sounded great. From everything I heard, the videos I saw, you guys are really firing on all cylinders. And uh, man, Colorado loves them some leftover salmon. We're lucky, man. I think we live in, I mean, I most of us live here. We live in like the best state to go through a pandemic in, I think, because there's so many nice outdoor spaces to gather in, even when you're trying to social distance still, like capacities are still small and Mm-hmm. We can still do big shows at Red Rocks, you know? Yeah. What was the capacity there? Did you know? I think the... it was 25 or 2,800. How was it gigging in Miami during the pandemic? So Florida didn't close down, you know? Right. Of course, it was a blessing plus a curse, like all at the same time. But, right. you know, so so like you have like 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 all of your bigger spots, you know, they were doing the whole pods things, you know, so like everything was still scaled back. But we we're talking about like, you know, 30 percent, 40 percent versus like 10 percent, you know. Right. 
so you know but but things were still open you know there's yeah. a lot of guys that were coming down to florida just a gig because florida right. was open. yeah wow just because you know but i just florida for you know i mean this blessing and the curse yeah man glad you got to keep working a little bit at least yeah you know i tried to you know i didn't that was not quick to like you know start back going and just gigging sure. and gigging just because but you know there's some guys that that kept gigging which was good for them you know but you know it's wide open now you know it's crazy to watch how everything's opening up, especially after the most recent CDC guidance we just got. It feels really good, man. And it's right. hence me sitting next to this guy in person. Right. Pretty friggin' cool. It's really awesome, man. I'm so excited for what's to come, and I haven't said no to a concert or a concert offer or a concert ticket since things open back up. I'm doing everything I can, man. Shit, yeah. I want to leave this conversation today with, I would ask you... To articulate what you like about each other's playing, uh, do you want to start? Yeah. Hey, what, yeah. what do you like about Andy's playing? Oh, everything. You know, there's there's nothing not to freaking like about Andy's. You know what, man? The fact that every time I play with him, you know what, man? I go up like you know what, man? I'm never five levels, you know, and and you know what, man? That's that's not just blowing smoke, you know. That's the truth. Everybody have their shows where you know what, they're playing their thing, but then they get their friend or like that special guest on stage that will push them not knowingly that they are doing it that's andy mm-hmm. for me you know and do that's every time i play if i know that i have to play with him i buckle up quick you know <laughs> you're all right listen man if i know that i have to play with him there's a quick change in my, you know, mind frame of thinking, you know, <laughs> tighten up quick, you know, or else, you know. You can't smoke as much weed as you normally do before I, I, a show, I, I right, cannot, Rosie? Wow, because you know what, then the, you won't you know be what? able to keep up, right? Um, I am stopping <laughs> all weed smoking. Yeah, yeah. Andy, don't <laughs> don't take that to heart, Andy. I, I don't smoke weed. So, I um, Speaking of smoking weed, Andy Thorne, what do you like about Roosevelt's playing? Well, dude, I was a fan even before we played together, we I think we did a tour, a New Year's tour where the Lee Boys played with Salmon. Mm. And you also sat in with like Emmett Nershi and Salmon down at Swanee. Yeah. So I just heard you play a lot. And then after we played, when we played those gigs together, I realized like how linked our right hand patterns are. Yeah. But what you can do that I can't is like play these soulful melodies because which you have so much soul, like you have the sustain oh, that um, man, that you. I don't have in the banjo. And to hear the way you mix like this soul, these soulful melodies with the faster riffs oh. is something that I wish I could get into my playing instead of just doing the faster riffs. Cause uh, on a banjo, you don't have that sustain. And the way you like combine the beautiful melodic phrases with the long slid held out notes with sustain with the faster stuff is just incredible to me. Oh, dude, thank you, man. I guess it's cheating. Well, it's not cheating, but it's just the fact that I'm fretless versus you, you know? Yeah. So, you know what, man? It's it's, it's just easier to do that type deal, but, you know. I have to say the combination of those two separate approaches and that musical language is the two of you guys together. It's one of my favorite duo combinations that I've ever heard, and... uh so grateful to have heard it multiple times. I'm grateful to have done it. And thanks yeah. for putting it together, man. Yeah, wait, wait. Hold on, Justin. So are you saying that we should do a tour? That sounds amazing. All right. We'll Don't talk threaten about me later. with a good time. We'll, we'll we had a tour booked later. right before the uh, right before COVID hit, right? We were going to do another ski town run. Yeah, we were. We were going to do that. But I think a duo tour at some point could be cool, too. I think that a, would I be epic. Think a- thank you for having this conversation with us. And also, I want to say thank you so much for being a progressive musical voice Mm. in bluegrass music and even a progressive musical voice within the jam realm i appreciate it man it's really good to talk to you guys i wish i was with you in person because it looks like y'all are having fun today well we'll have to get together sometime soon let me know when you're in denver and we will uh smoke a bunch of weed sounds great yes we will (laughs) you're not invited (laughs) andy man i love you brother love you guys
it's been really a blast just to be back here with y'all man i mean just to think that we haven't sat down like this in over like 18 months or so you know or maybe more and now we're here just chilling like nothing never happened it feels great but we are definitely being safe about it but man i'm thankful to be back out you know back here you know mm -hmm. well i'll say it's amazing i'm so glad that we can do this in person as opposed to over the phone or skype thank you for seven years of a working relationship mm. But I'm going to go further and say thank you for a decade plus of entertaining me. Even when, you know, we didn't know each other. I had yeah. seen the Lee Boys. I had seen wow. you play. You know, I, I've been seeing you for, I don't know, 12, 13 years. Wow. So thank you for <laughs> twice as long as we've known each other. That's crazy. So thank you for all of the great music. Thank you for teaching me most wow. of what I know about steel, which is a, a form of music, sacred steel, that I hold so dear in my life now. And... Thank you for being just a continuous professional and someone that I love to work with. For sure, man. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for listening to Galaxy Tenants. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe, like, rate, and review wherever you listen to podcasts. For early access to episodes and exclusive content, check us out on Patreon. Also, if you'd like to communicate with us, send an email to galaxytenants at gmail.com or leave a voicemail on the Galaxy Tenants hotline at 303-550-2065.